Hello, welcome to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou. Today I want to share with you the Christian fiction books that I could find that were releasing in July 2023. So these are some books that I could find that are releasing in July. If you know of any more then please do leave them down in the comments and as we're going through let me know which um, books you think you might read in the future. If you're new to this channel I make videos about Christian fiction, Christian non-fiction occasionally and my Christian faith. So if that's something you're interested in please do subscribe. I split the books up into different genres so um, let's have a look in Mystery and Suspense. Every Dog Has His Day by Janice Thompson is published by Barber Fiction and releases on the 1st of July. Lone Star Groomer Trinity Nelson adopts a feisty rescued Dashand and the two are inseparable until Texans quarterback Corey Wallace announces a large reward for his missing female Dashand. Dashand? Dachshund? Not sure. Uh, suddenly all of Houston are on the lookout for the MIA pooch that bears a strong resemblance to Trinity's new pup. Trinity contacts Corey, but soon Ginger goes missing and Trinity is convinced Corey and his agent took her for a publicity stunt. Then there is a reporter who could be trying to ma manufacture a great story or a cameraman seeking a big reward. Can there be a happy ending for Ginger? Death by Food Truck by Joy Copeland, Cynthia Hickey, Linda Baton Johnson and Teresa Eves Lilly is published by Barber Fiction and that also releases on the 1st of July. Birch Tree, Maine is experiencing a rash of deaths, all mysteriously linked to food trucks that frequent the Birch Point pa Lake Park. Angel's new donut truck was doing great until deathly rumours started. Shanice thought she had customer support when taking over her grandpa's potato truck until one started complaining. Marisol's taco truck is a fixture in the park until linked to a food judge's death. May's noodle truck was her ticket to a new life until her ex-boyfriend threatens to take it away. Could competition between vendors have led to this murder and mayhem? Break of Day by Colleen Coble is published by Thomas Nelson and it releases on the 4th of July. This is book three in the Annie Pedersen series. So some of this I can't read because it's the third book and it'll spoil the first two. When a man escapes law enforcement custody and someone's safety is suddenly in question. Annie's personal and professional lives once again merge. Meanwhile, her investigation of hikers who have gone missing in the remote woods of Michigan's Upper Peninsula puts her in the crosshairs of a deadly game. Now Annie is the one being hunted. Cold Pursuit by Nancy Mail is published by Bethany House and releases on the 11th of July, and this is book one in the Ryland and St. Clair series. Ex-FBI profiler River Ryland still suffers from PTSD after a case that went horribly wrong. Needing a fresh start, she moves to St. Louis to be near her ailing mother and opens a private investigation firm with her friend and former FBI partner, Tony St. Clair. They are soon approached by a grieving mother who wants them to find out what happened to her teenage son who disappeared four years ago. River knows there's almost no hope the boy is still alive, but his mother needs closure and River and Tony need a case, no matter how cold it might be. In historical fiction, Rebecca by Shannon McNear is published by Barber Fiction and releases on the 1st of July. This is part of the Daughters of the Lost Colony series. Born the daughter of a Powhatan chieftain and a woman of unknown origins, Mato Aka enjoys a carefree life. When strange men from across the eastern waters appear near her home, she regards them at first as a mere curiosity. Soon, though, she finds herself torn between friendship with one of their leaders and the opinions and politics of her elders. Drawn to a young Englishman, John Rolfe, who has lost a wife and baby daughter, she shares his griefs and perhaps something more. Could she have a future among the English of Jamestown, accepting their ways and even changing her name? Could her fate be a part of the lasting legacy of the lost colony of Roanoke? Ladies of the Lake by Cathy Gulk is published by Tyndale and releases on the 11th of July. When she is forced to leave her beloved Prince Edward Island to attend Lakeside Ladies Academy after the death of her parents, the last thing Adelaide Rose McNeil expects to find is three kindred spirits. 
the ladies of the lake, as the four girls called themselves, quickly bond like sisters, vowing that when, wherever life takes them, they will always be there for each other. But that is before, before love and jealousy come between Adelaide and Dorothy, the closest of the friends. Before the dawn of World War I upends their world and casts baseless suspicion on the German-American man they both love. Seventeen years later, Rosalind Murray receives an unsuspecting telephone call from Dorothy, now headmistress of Lakeside, inviting her to attend the graduation of a new generation of girls, including Rosalind's beloved daughter. With that call, Rosalind is drawn into a past she determined to put behind her. In the Shelter of Hollythorn House by Sarah E. Ladd is published by Thomas Nelson and releases on the 11th of July. It is the Houses of Yorkshire, book two. Young widow Charlotte Grey faces an uncertain future until a chance encounter with her first love gives her heart a second chance in this Regency romance set on the Yorkshire moors. England, 1817, Charlotte Grey thought she had seen the last of Anthony Wellborn, knowing her father would have would never consent to his only daughter marrying a man he deemed beneath their family station charlotte bid her final farewell to antony and vowed he to never turn back instead she honoured her father's wishes by marrying the wealthy roland prior determined to put his love for charlotte in the past antony wellborn cho- chose to follow his goals and immerse himself in a life full of meaning first as a soldier fighting a war overseas then as a member of William Walstead's watchman, a rugged band of men dispatched to deal with perilous situations. Fearless and persistent, he makes it his life's focus to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. When Charlotte's husband dies unexpectedly, she quickly realises how blind she'd been to his nefarious ambitions and how many people he'd angered in his relentless quest for wealth. Charlotte comes face to face with her former love who has been sent as one of the hired watchmen to protect her and her son until the details of her late husband's estate are settled. The All-American by Susie Finkbeiner is published by Ravel and it releases on the 11th of July. It is 1952 and nearly all the girls 16-year-old Bertha Harding knows dream of getting married, keeping house and raising children in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. Bertha dreams of baseball. She reads every story in the sports section. She plays ball with the neighbourhood boys. She even writes letters to the pitcher for the Workington Sweet Peas, part of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. When Bertha's father is accused of being part of the Communist Party by the House Un-American Activities Committee, life comes crashing down on them. Disgraced and shunned, the Hardings move to a small town to start over, where the only one who knows them is shy Uncle Matthew. But dreams are hard to kill, and when Bertha gets a chance to try out for the Workington Sweet Peas, she packs her bags for an adventure she'll never forget. Finding Us by Tracy Peterson is published by Bethany House and is releases on the 25th of July. This is book two in the Pictures of the Heart series. One candid photograph will change the lives of four people forever. While taking photographs at an exposition in Seattle in 1909, camera girl Eleanor Bennett snaps an image of a woman in widow's clothes with deep sorrow etched in her expression and a young infant in her arms. Eleanor longs to study botany at the University of Washington and soon becomes fast friends with botanist Bill Reed, but she can't stop thinking about the widow in the photograph. She is stunned to learn Bill recognises the woman as the sister-in-law he believed lost in a shipwreck. As Eleanor and Bill hunt for Amelia Reed to reunite her with her grief-stricken husband, they must stand together to face the danger that follows and learn to trust that God will direct their paths. In Contemporary Romance, Two to Tango by Kathleen Fuller is published by Thomas Nelson and releases on the 11th of July. This is book four in the Maple Falls romance series. When career-driven Olivia Farnsworth and Kingston Bedsford refuse to act on their obvious chemistry, the town of Maple Falls schemes to pair the two up and dance their way to another happy ending. Olivia, Olivia Farnsworth always has a plan and knows just what she likes. She likes her job as head librarian. She likes spending time with her aunt, B and with her close-knit group of friends, and she likes attending the cinema's monthly vintage movie night. What she does not like is stepping outside her comfort zone. But when Kingston Bedford, her best friend's older brother, runs into her, 
into her at the movies. That's exactly what she does. In fantasy and sci-fi, Light of Iden by Karen Hancock is the first book in the Legends of the Guardian King series. It was first published 20 years ago, but it is now being published in hardback and audiobook by Enclave and releases on the 11th of July. Abram has dedicated the last eight years of his life to becoming worthy to touch and tend the sacred flames of Iden, and he expects to be blessed for his devotion and sacrifice. But on the eve of taking the vows that will irre- irrevocably separate him from the life he was born to, as Abram Caladorn, fifth son of the king of Kiriath, he is betrayed by his spiritual mentor and sold into slavery by his brothers. Swept along by the winds of a new destiny, Abram is forced to complete compete as a gladiator. When the oppressed masses rally around his success, he discovers his suffering has moulded him into something greater than he ever thought possible, to serve a purpose he never imagined. In biblical fiction, The Woman from Lydia by Angela Hunt is published by Bethany House and releases on the 11th of July. This is her first book in the Emissary series, Emissaries series. Widowed Eodia, known to her neighbours as the Lydian woman, seeks to make a fresh start by moving to the foreign city of Philippi. She finds new purpose after meeting Paulus, apostle to the Gentiles, who opens her eyes to helping those in need, particularly women and those who have been enslaved. Retired Roman soldier Hector has settled in Philippi with dreams of a future filled with wealth and status, pooling his army yearnings with Lucius, his fellow comrade in arms, turned business partner. His hopes are dashed, however, when Paulus robs their youngest slave of her lucrative ability to foretell the future, rendering her worthless to Hector's ambition. When Euodia becomes aware that Sabina is being mistreated, she buys Sabina from Lucius, intending to set the girl free, but when Hector claims the sale is not legitimate, he takes Sabina back and swears he will find someone to restore her valuable gift, even if he must travel to the ends of the earth to do so. Following close behind him, Euodia and her servants set out to rescue Sabina, not for gain, but to rescue and set her free forever. Okay, so those are all the books that I could find so far that are releasing in July. As I said, if you know of any more, let me know in the comments and also let me know which was your favourite book of those. Uh, When I'm trying to find these books, I'm looking on Amazon to see whether they're listed as Christian fiction or not. And I can't tell how much uh, Christian content might be in that book from the descriptions. Uh, I haven't read them, so um, just a disclaimer on that. They are listed as Christian fiction, but I can't tell how much Christian content is in them. Also, I'm doing I'm recording this slightly earlier, so sometimes they do change the release dates, uh, but it should they should be sort of around about this time. So, but just go and look them up. I'll leave um, the list of books that I've mentioned down in the description so that you can uh, look at those for yourselves. So, I hope you're having a really great reading week. I hope you're all well, and until next time, God bless. Bye.